when I was in teacher's college, um, I took up I took music as my uh, principal study. So I, uh, when the college activities is concerned, at the time college had a Scot, we had a Scottish uh, lecturer called Mrs. Alcock. And she did encourage us. She she you know, she organized a performance of Gilbert and Sullivan. So many of my classmates took part in it, and we enjoyed it. Then, when I graduated from the teachers' college uh, as a primary school teacher, uh, I, I was I was sent sent to school to teach. I be became a musician in a very natural way. Sort of, um, I, I didn't, I didn't say that when I left school, I, I want to do this. I want, I must do this. I must become a doctor, or I must become, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I didn't do that. Uh, although in thought you were thinking, what, what uh, profession you're going to choose? Uh. But at that time, happened I liked music very much. So I said, whatever happened. Let me, uh, you know, uh, enjoy myself with music. I even started play, playing the piano on my own. I, I, I didn't say because I want to be a composer, therefore I must um, uh, uh, do this, do this, do, do this. I, I actually, there was no such planning. Things only came naturally. Of course, morning, morning time is a good time. But other times doesn't mean that other times you cannot compose. But uh, morning time is a good time. When, when I compose, um, I think the first thing is, um, uh, is I need to satisfy myself. Second thing is whoever performs it or sings it, they should enjoy. If they don't enjoy, uh, I don't feel happy. Yeah, the player, the singer, whether they are Singaporeans or whether they are Europeans, no, 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 no distinction for me. And luckily, my works are, uh, you know, taken in by. <laughs> But <laughs> Europeans or Singaporeans, uh, so it was, uh, I was lucky. That was a period where I wanted to write for the orchestra. So when the request came, I was feeling very happy. <laughs> Three months. Three months, okay, no problem. But my problem is after the performance, what is going to be the reaction of the listener? I think in any uh, composing activities, or whether you are local or where you are foreign, we all have hurdles, we all have problems. <laughs> so, if you, are, if you are thinking about topics associated with uh, uh, what you call nationalism or what, uh, actually the, the present day, our younger generation don't have strong feelings of uh, nationalism. We, we are, our society is getting more international <laughs> in, 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 many, in many respects. So, uh, no hurdles. <laughs> so you just, you just write whatever you, you, you feel like writing. Because I helped to organize uh, like Rediffusion Choir, and later on, Metro Philharmonic Choir. 
um, not so much to demand that, that, that I want to write for for the choirs. Um, it's um, we we we've been singing music by composers of other countries, you know, like European composers or Chinese composers. So I said, uh, why can't we sing our works which we write ourselves? So that's how um, it happened. Yeah. Then later on, perhaps coming to present day, uh, where demand is concerned, <laughs> I think the Ministry of Education, whenever they hold a, 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 a choral second year, choral competition second year, I think they've asked me twice to to, to write the, 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 the competition piece for them, for them, yeah. And then, where uh, Singapore Symphony is concerned, they, they have asked me to, to, to write books uh, at different times. So. How do you want to get yourself involved? You get a well-known conductor to come and conduct your rehearsal although you are a composer there are a few things can happen one is as a composer oh Mr. Conductor I want this to be done this way I want it that way that way you know this is one way another way is um, you leave it entirely to the conductors. Of course, the conductor need to know your score well. Yeah, before he conducts, he need to study your score well. So, if you do it the first kind, you might you should be prepared to, for the conductor to say that. Oh, that's the case. You conduct. <laughs> This was quite quite ordinary. I mean, the, uh, at the time, I was uh, doing weekly rehearsal with singers who came along to sing the songs. So I accompanied them. After running through. So the way we do the recording, the recording should be broadcast one week later. And this thing is done every week. At the time, we, we, we really um, doing a lot of things very fast. Sir. So, after some time, the Director of the of Radio Fusion uh, sort of she was wondering how to you know encourage people to come and sing more. So I suggested to her we form a choir. First of all, we make them a choir. So. Before that, I accompanied every one of them, you know, before the recording. So I know their, their, their voices. So when I put them to, uh, ask them to come to and sing, I, uh, I'm very happy. I, 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 I know what kind of voices they are, you know. And they are very happy because uh, said singing together is another way of music making. So that is how I started conducting. <laughs>
you know when I was teenagers for uh, wartime, Japanese occupation for three and a half years. So, of course, um, after the war, the you know the Victoria Concert Hall was a place reserved for European musicians. So many of us were looking outside and said, <laughs> could we get in, into inside and first of all to listen to uh, other uh, people perform. But secondly, can we go inside and perform ourselves? <laughs> oh. So that was uh, in the 60s, I think, 60s. 70s were a little better. Uh, we built our own uh, National Theatre. Yeah. Uh, AT, as you know, is progressing. Uh, we all could uh, hold a concert in the Victor Concert Hall, for instance. And we are building more and more concert halls. Yeah. Oh, Singaporean music, different people have got different definition. Uh, if you ask me, <laughs> well, I suppose uh, Singaporean music, uh, 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 music that, that's uh, related or connected with, uh, to, with uh, related to or connected with uh, the, the songs which uh, we've been singing. Uh, the music that we've been hearing in Singapore. Well, publication is probably not a difficult thing to do. The problem is, after publication, who performed it? That, that's a problem. Oh, that's a problem. The stations that broadcast to many Singaporeans, you know, 80% or 90% of them. These stations don't promote the serious Singapore composers. They promote what? They promote commercial stuff here and there. They, the stations did quite a lot. Every second week or so, they invite different groups uh, to go to the stations and, you know, either televise the performance or record the performance. I think um, it's, it's more like acceptable to to all kinds of listener, listener. It is unlike many contemporary works that uh, when one hears, one needs to repeat the hearing again and again, and then finally to say whether one likes it or not. But there was some point, the, the first hearing, you can straight away say you like it or you don't like it. Yeah. So uh, I think it's not difficult to listen to. Who is Leong Yun Pin? I don't know him. <laughs> I first of, first of all, I don't think I'm in the limelight. <laughs> you know, I I don't think that because um, I I I was. Always, uh, I feel that my soul is always behind the scene. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so, Leong Yun Pin is only an ordinary man. <laughs>